my, my, I know what time it is. Hallelujah. I was going to take a couple of minutes because I know we have our meeting afterwards and, and all of this is important, every bit of it is. Um, but I want to share just a brief thought. I just want to plant seed with you this morning about the reality of where we've been going and what God is in the midst of doing. And I'll probably pick back up on it again next week in the thoughts of things. But we've been talking about getting our focus on heaven this year. Focus on heaven in 201 and 7. And God has been speaking some thought process into our spirits based out of Philippians 3, 13 and 14. And I'm not going to belabor that point this morning, but the reality of that scripture boils down to this, is that Paul is planting seed into our hearts and into our lives, each and every one of us, that God desires to grow up and become the fullness of everything that he wants to do in our hearts and lives. Why? Because we have a destiny Each one of us has a destiny, and it's important that we recognize that destiny and we recognize what God wants to do with regards to it so that we get our focus where it needs to be. But for that to happen, God has to, in essence, plant seed. By seed, what I mean is thought process into our hearts and lives that changes and transforms us, get us focused the way where God is focusing, uh, what he's focusing in on, so that you and I, our lives can be changed and transformed on a consistent, ongoing basis, so that in the midst of it, God can do some things like Jesus talked about in Matthew 17. We talked about that the other week, a couple of weeks back ago, again, with, with Jesus. Jesus made this thought process, made this statement that if you have faith as mustard seed, and I'm going to condense down those two verses into one thought about the reality that if, if you have the faith as mustard seed, in other words, that God can take and plant the seed of faith inside of you, nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus said you can speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. And the reality of it boils down to is a combination of thought process that God wants to birth inside of us with regards to what seed consists of and what faith consists of and in reality seed and faith are one and the same in many areas and thought process of life and we have to understand the dynamics of it for it to, be, uh, to develop and be accomplish the fullness of all that God has in our hearts and lives. So in the thought process of life, God wants to get us to that place that we're going to be living life in His presence. We've talked about that also since the first of the year. And that we can catch a glimpse behind the veil of of God's curtain, so to speak, and see things from His perspective. Because I believe we're living in this day and this age that the Lord's coming and He's coming soon. Amen? And in the midst of His coming, He wants us to be changed and transformed. He wants us to be ready for His coming. I dare say that there's many that are not ready for the Lord's coming. If he was coming, if he was to come today and he was to show up and the trumpet of God was going to sound and the dead in Christ were going to rise and those of us that remain are going to be caught up to be with him, are you ready? That is the question that you need to answer for yourself today. It's a very important question. And so God sets us on a course to prepare us and help us to be ready in every area of life so that in the midst of things that goes on, we can sort of answer that reality of what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 8, where he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they are the ones who are going to be able to see God. I, I think that ties in with the reality of heaven itself. It ties in with the reality of eternity itself. That when I get to my, uh, when I get to that place where I need to be in my walk with God through salvation in Christ Jesus and Him alone, and allowing God to change and transform my life to where I become the very image of Jesus, so to speak, in my heart and my life, that I'll start to see God for who He is, and that when I see Him high and lifted up and exalted because of who He is. My life not only is changed and transformed, but my circumstances are changing and transformed. My focus in life becomes what it needs to be. And in the midst of that, God does what he needs to do inside of me so that I can become everything he wants me to be. Amen? Somebody help me preach this morning. Because that's the reality of what life is all about. Because you are on a destiny that, that needs to be changed and transformed. We need to understand this morning a very simple truth. That life's not about the here and now. It's not about the here and now. Your life, it's all about the hereafter. That's what your life is all about. And too easily and too often, we, get, we miss that focus in life itself. We get caught up in everything that's going on. Too many of us live our lives for the, for the fleeting moment of today. And we lose sight of the very moment after we draw our last breath that we're going to go off into our eternity. 
And because of that, we're not prepared and ready for what it is that God has in store and what God wants to do. So it's important that we grasp these truths and allow God by His Spirit to change and transform us. We started talking a couple of weeks ago in between the mission uh, emphasis and all that we had. And, and wanna, i got to thank you all for that. I meant to do it earlier. I didn't do it. I'll talk to you about it next week. So hold on to that thought. Amen. Just popped in my spirit for a minute. Some of you might be wondering. But the reality about life itself all boils down to becoming the real pure in heart before God so that God can start to do what needs to be done inside of us so that we not only see him, but we'll become like him. And we'll live in a measure that honors and glorifies him all the more. So we've been talking about the reality about God's pure in heart. We started taking a look at the very thought process a couple of weeks ago about what the P of pure in heart stands for. Because remember, God is always planting and birthing seed inside of our lives. And we talked about the thought process that the, the P stood for the potential of the seed that God wants to plant inside of you and me. See, God is always planting seed inside of you. You sit down and you read his word or something's going on inside of you. The Holy Spirit speaking into your heart and life. God is always planting. But you and I, most of the time, we fail to recognize the potential of the seed that God's planting inside of us. We fail to recognize and not look at a seed like the mustard seeds that Jesus talk, talked about from the standpoint of realizing that inside the smallest of all seeds was the greatest of trees. Inside the smallest of the seed that God will plant inside of you is the greatest abundance of all that God wants to birth inside of you. God wants to do something great inside of you so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? But for that to happen, something has to happen inside of you. You've got to grasp a hold of what it is that God wants you to see and grab a hold of and start to step out in faith, allowing God to transform it. That's the potential of the seed that God's planted in you. We talked earlier, just for a few moments, in the, in the midst of things, about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, when we were ministering before, do you realize that what was planted inside of her was a seed that she reached out and grabbed a hold of, and that seed came to fruition in a few moments of her life? Why? Because as the seed was planted, she recognized the potential, and she allowed God to do something within it. But for that to happen inside of you and I, we've also got to come to one other thing. We've got to come to our understanding of what the seed is all about. You see, you've got to see what it is inside that God wants to do inside of you so that you can be changed and transformed. Unless you start to have an understanding of what it is that God wants to do inside of your life, He wants to do with your life, He wants to not only transform through your life things, if you can start to grasp a hold of what it is that God wants for you and what He wants to do inside of you and you have that understanding, let me tell you something. Your life is not only going to be on track, but you're going to start to see things not from your perspective anymore, but from God's. You're going to realize that your life is all about the one thing that's important. God's setting you, getting you ready for your eternity, amen, and wants to use you to accomplish something great for his kingdom here on this earth. When you and I can get to that place of allowing the Holy Spirit to minister into us and through us in that measure, that's when things start to change and transform. And that's when you and I start to understand everything about the seed that God wants to plant inside of us. I go to the thought process in Genesis 1 and 11. And in that, those verses of scriptures, God said these words. He says, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that do what? Bear fruit with the seed in it according to their various kinds. I want you to imagine with me for a moment when God literally spoke this earth into existence because this earth in essence is a seed also. It's a seed of the thought process or the imagination if you will of God himself. God pictured what he wanted and in the midst of it he spoke it forth. That's literally the seed that he birthed in the midst and so you and I are the, are the ever living and always living reality of what God himself birthed. Well that's the essence of what seed is and how it works within the framework of what faith does inside of each one of us and the reality of it is right in the midst of those verses of scripture because God himself said listen I'm going to create seed I'm going to create seed inside of you I'm going to create seed in the natural and in the midst of it it's going to go into the ground and although it's going to germinate start to develop do what it needs to do the very same things that God does inside of you and I and the things that he plants inside of our hearts and then it's supposed to take and bear fruit from the very seed of the various kind, in other words, the thought process that God has placed inside of us. Why am I saying that to you this morning? Because, and I am, I'm rushing, needless to say, in the midst of what I want to convey to you today, is the simple truth of this. 
that inside of you is some great things that God himself has planted. Inside of you are some things that God wants to bring forth for his glory. But for that to happen, you and I have got to have an understanding about the seed that God has planted inside of us. And that like any seed that God ever plants, whether it be the seed that he plants into the ground, that's going to bear the fruit that he created it to create, just like the seed that he plants inside of us, for it to come to its fruition and be everything that God wants it to be, you must do some things. You must come to some understanding. And in that understanding, allow God to take that seed and accomplish what it is. Could you imagine if that mustard seed that inside of it, it knows what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this huge tree. Could you imagine inside of that mustard seed, if it did not be, if it was not planted into the ground, it would never become what it was created to be? If you don't take and plant into the ground what it is that God's birthing inside of you and don't allow God to do what it is he needs to do inside of you, in the midst of it, you will never develop the fullness of all God has for you. You'll never fulfill the things that God wants to do inside of you. Why? Because in the midst of that circumstance, you didn't follow, or you didn't have an understanding, I should say, of what it means to allow that seed to be planted in the ground and to become the fullness of all that God would have for it to be. See, everything starts as a seed. Everything starts as a seed. See, that's the law of the harvest itself. And what God is giving us in this verse is his understanding of how seed itself, our faith, recedes its full potential. And so for that to happen inside of you, you have to grasp a hold of the reality and have an understanding of the seed itself. Now, I don't have enough time to go into the fullness of what that is all about. You'll have to pick it up next week, so to speak. But the reality of life boils down to this. When God plants seed inside of us, the things that he's given to us with a vision for his future, what you and I need to understand, that we have a responsibility in it. And let me just say it from this standpoint, that responsibility begins, develops, and in reality ends with one very simple principle that you need to understand about the seed. And this is where I'll pick up next week, is the reality that you've got to sow that seed if you ever expect to get anything out of it. Now, I want to pick up next week on that simple truth. Now, I know today's been an unusual service, more so for me than for anybody else, probably for everybody, though, too. Because as pastor, when I'm up here and I, I understand my responsibility and what I try to make sure that I try to hear what God wants, sometimes he blocks me from seeing. And he did that to me this morning. All he wanted me to do was to be obedient. And so I don't know what God's done here this morning. Only you know and he knows. But I'm grateful that today, even though it's been an unusual service, my hope is that somehow in the midst of today, you have received something from the Lord that only he could have given to you. That's my hope today. And I hope that in the midst of all that it is, and even though I know I haven't ministered in the message that I wanted to and the time got away from it, I realize also that there's other things that I'm charged with taking care of responsibility-wise that I want to also impart today into the hearts and lives of each one of you from the standpoint of the meeting that we're going to have in a few moments. So even though you haven't been fully filled and, and fed in the measure that I would hope that you would be, and, and, and transparently I'll probably go home today and I'll probably lay before the Lord for a while wondering, Lord, what in the world's gone on? And that's the truth. That's just my nature. The reality of today is this, that I earnestly believe that God has ministered to you in such a measure in a way that truly when you leave here, as, as my hope is every day, Every time we have service that you'll leave here changed and transformed and that God will somehow have ministered to you in a way that only he can. Amen. So I want you to stand with me, if you will. Hold on to the thought process, the reality where we're going in thoughts about having understanding about the very seeds of the things that God's birthing in you. And don't lose hope because let me tell you, every seed that God plants in our lives eventually does come to bear its fruit. Sometimes you have to just wait a long time for that fruit or that seed to bear the fruit that it's supposed to. Hold on to that thought for next week, and we'll pick up next week in that thought process. Father.
I exalt you and I give you praise today, Lord. And all I can do is just place into your hands your precious children, knowing full and well that somehow in the midst of all that has taken place here today, you have done what you wanted to do. You have spoken into the hearts and lives of your children. You have ministered to them as only you can. Lord, it's always good to get out of the way and let you be God. And that's what I desire to do in every service. So, Lord, I believe today you have ministered into the hearts and lives of many. Maybe not every, but, Lord, in the hearts and lives of many. And that today, that they will have received from you what it is they have need of. So this morning, O oh God, as we conclude today's service, may you have been exalted and glorified. May the hearts and lives of your children been touched in mighty, many and mighty ways. And then, Lord, may your glory go before them so that, Lord, as they leave your house, today let them not only be blessed O god but lord let them receive from you all that it is bless them as they go out bless them as they come in bless everything that your children set their hearts and their minds to in jesus mighty name and amen now with that what i want to do is i'm going to first dis dismiss though our guests that are here today and let me say this uh, you may not be a regular member of the church, and that's okay. If you pay your tithes here, you're given offerings, you're, you're more than welcome to stay and hear what it is that I want to talk to the congregation about. Um, but if, if not, I thank you for coming and being here. Uh, please come back again next week. I hope God will richly touch and bless you between this week. Come out on Wednesday night. Be a part of our service. We're doing a lot of great things. Looking at some of the stuff of Perry Stones, and really God's been ministering in a great way with regards to that.